without its main star, without Frank Underwood, does this show hold together or does it come down like a house of cards? Well, you'll have to stay tuned to find out. Hi nerds, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Now, when you subscribe to us, hit the bell notification so you can get the heads up when new content comes from the Movie Nerds team. House of Cards Season 6 is the end of an era. Frank Underwood has kept viewers in thrall from his climb to the top as the most twisted and questionable politician in US history. He is a vindictive, vicious man, and now he is gone. Skip ahead 10 seconds so you don't get spoiled about the fate of Frank Underwood. He's dead. Dead, 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 dead. Okay, welcome back. So, the specter of Frank Underwood's decisions looms over the presidency of Claire Underwood. Everyone is wondering how Claire is going to deal without, with life without Frank Underwood by her side. The Shepherds step in. Now, the Shepherds are a rich family who influence in politics, kind of like Raymond Tusk, but the difference is they're a lot worse. Greg Kinnear plays Bill Shepard, Diane Lane plays Annette Shepard, and they want their money's worth from the Underwood presidency. But as time goes on, Claire proves once again that she will not listen, she will not yield, and she will challenge them at every corner. If Frank Underwood was the villain we love to root for, root for, Claire Underwood is the villain that we want to have. She is on the people's side, she's vicious, she's ambitious, and she will not let anyone get in her way. And Robin Wright keeps her absolutely addictive watching with her impeccable performance. This is a powerhouse performance that might get some gold statues. But she's not the only incredible performer. Greg Kinnear as Bill Shepard is a sniveling, questionable man that you're gonna mm -hmm. kind of love to hate. And don't even get me started on Diane Lane as the woman in the shadows always pulling at somebody's strings. And fascinatingly, the supporting cast is as excellent as ever, but let me give you a heads up on one thing. Just as Game of Thrones doesn't hesitate to drop the axe on a few people, House of Cards Season 6 knows everything's on the line and doesn't waste any time. If somebody's not useful, something interesting's gonna happen. As time goes on, House of Cards becomes more and more gripping and thoughtful in its analysis of the US political system. House of Cards has always dealt with dark money, that little thing that influences all politicians' decisions, keeps Washington's gears going. It's money that talks, or as Frank Underwood says, with power, it's location, location, location. And as time goes on, we begin to realize that power in Washington is always under someone's battle. As time goes on, the season gets more and more fever pitch until it reaches that crescendo. In the end, House of Cards becomes the most addictive season since season two, and that is a compliment. This is the strongest it's ever been, and thank goodness too. If a show's gonna have an ending, this is the ending it needs to have. In November, House of Cards will be available on Netflix, just as the election hits our television screens, House of Cards will be the breakaway for fiction with a thought on real-life implications that you'll want to watch. For Movie Nerds, I'm Nick, and I'll see you nerds at the movies.